In this video, we will explore the anatomy of the anterior chamber angle, detailing its anatomical features and functions. We will begin with an introduction, followed by a detailed description of the structure of this angle and its anatomical relationships. We will conclude by summarizing the key takeaways. The anterior chamber angle, also known as the iridocorneal angle, is the outermost part of the anterior chamber. It forms at the point where the scleral wall meets the posterior wall of the iris. This meeting point creates a curved segment. This segment also includes the inner surface of the ciliary body, an important structure in the eye involved in the production of aqueous humor. The primary function of this angle is the drainage of the aqueous humor, the fluid that maintains pressure in the eye and provides nutrients to the eye components. In most forms of glaucoma, it is within this angle that the outflow of aqueous humor becomes obstructed. The anterior chamber angle, also known as the iridocorneal angle, represents a crucial anatomical feature in the human eye. Located as the outermost part of the anterior chamber, this angle is established at the junction where the scleral wall, the supportive fibrous outer layer of the eyeball, meets the posterior wall of the iris, the eye's colored part. The convergence of these structures forms a distinctively curved segment. This curved segment is not only a meeting point of the sclera and iris but also includes the inner surface of the ciliary body. The anterior chamber angle is primarily responsible for the drainage of the aqueous humor. This fluid is essential for maintaining intraocular pressure and providing necessary nutrients to various parts of the eye, including the lens and cornea. In the pathology of most forms of glaucoma, the obstruction of aqueous humor outflow occurs within the anterior chamber angle. When the aqueous humor cannot drain properly, it leads to an increase in intraocular pressure, which can result in damage to the optic nerve and impair vision. The anterior chamber angle is composed of two distinct walls and a vertex. The anterior external wall, formed by the inner surface of the sclerocorneal junction, this wall comprises several integral structures, Schwalb's ring, located at the most anterior part of the trabecular meshwork, it marks the boundary where the clear cornea transitions to the fibrous sclera. The scleral septum, this thin partition of scleral tissue contributes to the stability and shape of the anterior chamber angle. The scleral sulcus, a groove or depression in the sclera, adjacent to the scleral spur. The scleral spur, a prominent ridge of scleral tissue, serving as an attachment point for the trabecular meshwork and the ciliary muscle. The posterior internal wall, this wall is primarily constituted by the peripheral part of the iris and the ciliary body, essential in maintaining the anterior chamber angle's structural integrity and pivotal in the production and regulation of aqueous humor. The peripheral iris helps to form the posterior boundary of the angle. Lastly, the vertex, this the apex or the convergence point of the anterior external and posterior internal walls, the vertex is a critical landmark in the eye. It determines the openness of the angle, affecting fluid drainage and intraocular pressure. In conditions like glaucoma, assessing the vertex's angle is crucial for diagnosis and management. The anatomical relationships of the anterior chamber angle with surrounding ocular structures include, the anterior external aspect of the anterior chamber angle is related to the corneal limbus. Internally, the angle is in relation to the aqueous humor. Posteriorly and internally, the angle is related to the posterior chamber and the ciliary body vessels. The anterior chamber angle's macroscopic anatomy is an important and intricate part of the eye. It includes various structures that are essential for draining the aqueous humor and maintaining eye pressure. Before discussing these key structures, let's first explore the corneal limbus. This related structure is vital for managing the flow of aqueous humor in the eye. Commonly known as the limbus, this crucial structure is situated at the junction where the cornea merges with the sclera, creating a vital transition zone. When examined under slit lamp illumination, it is visible as a distinct ring, more pronounced along the vertical meridian, about 1.5 mm in width, compared to the horizontal meridian, roughly 1 mm wide. The limbus plays a key role in ocular health as it houses the principal conventional pathways for the drainage of aqueous humor. These pathways include the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, and the aqueous collector channels, all essential in maintaining intraocular pressure and fluid balance within the eye. The surgical limbus, a specialized region of the limbus, is a circumcorneal transitional zone approximately 2 mm in width. 
It is identifiable by its unique bluish-gray appearance and is located slightly posterior, about 0.5 mm, to the anterior boundary of the anatomical limbus. This zone extends subtly forward, positioning itself just anterior to Schlem's canal. A notable feature of the surgical limbus is its structural composition, which allows for easier separation of layers during surgical procedures. This characteristic renders it an optimal site for surgical interventions, particularly those requiring access to the anterior chamber angle of the eye, such as in certain glaucoma surgeries or corneal transplants. The ease of cleavage in this area minimizes potential damage to adjacent structures, making it a preferred pathway for ophthalmic surgeons. The blood supply of the corneal limbus is integral to its function. Here's a simplified overview. The corneal limbus receives its primary arterial blood supply from the anterior ciliary arteries. These arteries branch out from the ophthalmic artery. The venous drainage system at the limbus consists of an organized network of veins. These veins begin as small loops at the limbus and gradually merge into larger plexuses. The blood from these plexuses is then directed towards the conjunctival veins and eventually into the vortex veins. The limbus also has a network of lymphatic vessels. These vessels join to form the conjunctival and pericorneal lymphatic circles. They drain into the regional lymph nodes, including the preauricular and submandibular lymph nodes. The limbal nerve supply, a critical component of ocular anatomy, can be further elaborated upon as follows, he limbal nerve supply originates primarily from the long posterior ciliary nerves, key branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve V. Upon reaching the limbal surface, the long posterior ciliary nerves coalesce to form the pericorneal plexus, a significant neural network surrounding the cornea. This plexus branches off into smaller sensory nerves, which penetrate into the limbus and extend into the cornea. These fine branches are responsible for providing sensory innovation to the cornea, enabling sensations like pain, touch, and temperature. Beyond the superficial layers, the ciliary nerve plexus, located in the deeper supraciliary layer of the pars planar. This deeper nerve plexus extends its branches to the iridocorneal angle and adjacent regions, contributing to the innovation of these structures. The iridocorneal angle receives sensory innovation from these nerves. The nerves supplying the limbus and surrounding areas are composed of various types of fibers. This includes motor fibers, though limited in this region, they are involved in controlling small muscle movements in the eye. Vasomotor fibers, these fibers regulate blood flow by controlling the dilation and constriction of blood vessels. Sensory fibers, these are predominant and essential for corneal sensitivity, responding to stimuli like foreign objects, air, and temperature changes. And proprioceptive fibers, although less discussed, these fibers contribute to the sense of position and movement of the eye. The trabecular meshwork is a tiny, spongy structure composed of a network of collagen beans and endothelial cells that resembles a wedge-shaped, lamella tissue. This trabecular meshwork can be divided into three distinct parts, the uveal meshwork, this is the innermost layer, closest to the center of the anterior chamber, consisting of loose connective tissue with large pores. The corneoscleral meshwork, situated more externally than the uveal meshwork, this part has a tighter, more compact structure. The juxtacanalicular tissue, also known as the cribriform meshwork this is the outermost layer, directly adjacent to Schlem's canal. It is characterized by its densely packed collagen and extracellular matrix and is critical for regulating aqueous humor outflow. The primary function of the trabecular meshwork is to facilitate the drainage of aqueous humor from the anterior chamber into Schlem's canal and eventually into the venous system. Dysfunctional trabecular meshwork can lead to increased eye pressure, contributing to conditions like glaucoma. The canal of Schlem, also known as the scleral venous sinus or sinus venosus scleri. It is a circular, ring-shaped canal uniquely situated in the scleral sulcus, at the junction where the transparent cornea meets the opaque sclera, near the limbus of the eye. This canal encircles the iris, forming a part of the drainage angle of the eye. This positioning is strategic for its function in ocular fluid dynamics. The canal has two distinct sides, each playing a vital role in the drainage of aqueous humor. The external side, on this side, efferent collector channels insert into the canal. These collector channels are integral for transporting aqueous humor from the canal of Schlem into the systemic venous circulation. 
this drainage is essential in maintaining the balance of intraocular pressure. The internal side, this side is in direct contact with the trabecular meshwork, one of the primary structures regulating aqueous humor flow in the eye. It is lined with specialized endothelial cells that form a crucial interface between the trabecular meshwork and the canal. These endothelial cells not only provide a barrier but also play a dynamic role in the regulation of aqueous humor outflow, ensuring that it enters the canal from the trabecular meshwork effectively. As the aqueous humor exits the canal of Schlem, it enters the collector channels, which converge an anastomose to form an intrascleral plexus. This plexus serves as a transitional network, leading to the formation of aqueous veins. The aqueous veins are the final conduits for the aqueous humor, directing it into the systemic circulation. The efficient functioning of the canal of Schlem and its associated structures is vital for ocular health, particularly in preventing and managing conditions like glaucoma, where impaired drainage of aqueous humor leads to increased intraocular pressure. In conclusion, the angle of the anterior chamber is a key anatomical feature at the junction of the cornea and the iris. This angle is crucial for ocular fluid dynamics and intraocular pressure regulation. It is lined by the trabecular meshwork and includes Schlem's canal, integral components of the eye's primary drainage system for aqueous humor. The trabecular meshwork, characterized by its sieve-like structure, lines the inner aspect of Schlem's canal. This specialized formation allows it to act as a filter, controlling the flow of aqueous humor into Schlem's canal and subsequently into the venous system. The efficient functioning of this meshwork is vital for maintaining the balance of fluid within the eye and ensuring the stability of intraocular pressure. Schlem's canal, a circular channel, encircles the iris and plays a pivotal role in the final stage of aqueous humor drainage. The fluid, once filtered through the trabecular meshwork, enters this canal and is eventually drained into the systemic blood circulation. This process is essential for the continuous renewal of aqueous humor and for keeping the eye pressure within normal limits. However, any obstruction in the drainage pathway, either in the trabecular meshwork or in Schlem's canal, can lead to a buildup of aqueous humor. This accumulation results in increased intraocular pressure, a condition known as ocular hypertension. If left unchecked, this can progress to glaucoma, a serious eye condition that can lead to vision impairment or even blindness. Therefore, the integrity and functionality of the anterior chamber angle, the trabecular meshwork, and Schlem's canal are critical for ocular health and require regular monitoring, especially in individuals at risk of or suffering from glaucoma.